Kendra Settle is our speaker today and she works as an engineering manager with Siemens in Wendell, North Carolina. She received a BS in electrical engineering and an MS in engineering management. So without any further ado, I will go ahead and pass the mic off to her. Hey, good evening, everyone. So like Vivian said, I am Kendra. Um, glad I can be with you today. So today we're gonna to talk about, and I'm gonna share my screen. Um, to start. Today, we're going to talk about women in engineering leadership, and we're going to do a fun, um, simple circuit activity that you can do um, from the comfort of your home, since that's where most of us are, um, with some materials that you may have in your house. So I'll go through um, a little bit about me. We'll talk about um, women in engineering leadership, and then we'll flow through with the activity. And of course, feel free to ask any questions you may have. Um, all right, I'm gonna start. Okay, so who am I? Um, as Vivian said, my name is Kendra Settles. Um, I am an electrical engineering manager with Siemens Industry in Wendell, North Carolina. Um, as you can see, that's my building here um, where I used to go into every day, but since I'm working remotely, um, I won't see this place for a while, but um, this is where I work with um, my engineering team. I manage a team of about um, 11 electrical designer and electrical engineers, um, including some interns. And I'll get into more of what we do every day a little further in the presentation. So why am I here? The North Carolina Science Festival, um, as you know, all of April, there are uh, numerous activities, science activities um, going around um, the state of North Carolina. Unfortunately, as you all know, due to COVID, uh, we had to postpone um, all of those activities, but um, they are held every April. And also why I'm here is to meet students and share my love for science, um, specifically engineering, since I am an electrical engineer. A little bit about myself. I grew up in a small town of Ward, South Carolina. Um, don't worry if you don't know where that is because people in South Carolina have no clue as well, but it's a very small town. If you heard of Columbia, South Carolina, or Augusta, Georgia, I'm smack dab in the middle. Um, I always wanted to be a teacher and then an engineer. So in middle school, um, we went, I was in this program from third grade to eighth grade called SOAR, Students on Active Research. Had the opportunity to go to different, um, go on different adventures, do different research with that program. One of the trips we took was to a local university um, and there was a robotics competition. So I became obsessed with like, how are these robots doing this? How are they getting them to like program? What are they doing? And so I took it upon myself to take that opportunity to find out more about how I could get into doing a job like that. And that's where engineering came up. Specifically at the time, it was computer engineering. Um, and then I moved to electrical um, when I got to college. So when I was in high school, I was into math and sports. I played all three sports in high school and I was good at anything math and science. Um, then I ended up getting a scholarship to Clemson University for electrical engineering. As you can see, that's me. I feel like I haven't changed much since high school. I'm not gonna tell you how long ago that was, but that was me. I graduated number two. Um, again, small town. I graduated number two out of 52 uh, and got a scholarship to Clemson for Clemson University for engineering. So my current work. What do I do? Electrical engineering manager. As I mentioned, I um, am manager of a team of electrical engineers, electrical designers. Um, and what we do every day, I like to tell people, why does it matter? I keep the power on. So I do that by, if everybody is familiar with the panels, the um, circuit panels in your house, you could see like in a room or in a garage that there's a panel and maybe you've been playing video games or your mom's been cooking and there's a lot of power going on in the house like it is now since again, everybody's home. And all of a sudden you hear a click and your parents have to go and flip that switch um, on that panel, that little gray box in the house, gray or green. And that's what I do on an industrial scale. 
So my team handles all of the electrical wiring, the circuitry and the components that go into that box for power distribution. So once those boxes are made, they go out um, to schools, hospitals, um, any place that requires power. Um, and then those are connected through the local um, power, um, power companies in order to provide power distribution to our homes and to our buildings and um, restaurants and hospitals and whatnot. So my team handles all of the electrical components for that. Um, what am I really interested in? Um, in addition to my job in circuitry, I'm interested in finding new ways to introduce everyone to engineering. And most importantly to me is to make it fun. I remember when I was in school and we had to do science projects, it was torture for me because I didn't feel like it was gonna be anything new or interesting. And now that, you know, once I started thinking about robotics um, in middle school and then going to college and the different things you can do with engineering and science, I'm like, man, I would kill some science fairs back in the day. But now is my goal is to help kids understand that science and engineering can be fun. So a typical day for me looks like this. And I know if you aren't familiar with CAD drawings, you're like, what is this? And why would you find that fun? Well, as I mentioned, the little gray boxes in your house becomes this in my world, um, medium voltage switch gear. So with this switch gear, it's a bunch of um, circuit breakers, relays, fuses, and all the wiring of these components go into power distribution and circuitry. So that pullout, that's the little piece that's out, that's a circuit breaker. And those little um, switches in that box in your house, those are little circuit breakers. But this is on, a, again, an industrial scale. So a typical day looks like my team, myself, putting all of the circuit design on paper in CAD software, AutoCAD, um in order to make this box work so once we build it and put it on paper it goes through our production facility and we have people in production who are trained to wire and connect the dots so to say in order to make this box work um, so that's what a typical day looks like so it's fun because number one all the things you put on paper you get to see come to life and with that like the first time I did it and I actually had a job that like my first job that went through production when I was doing the circuitry and the wiring of the jobs or, or the CAD drawings for the wiring of the jobs. It was like, wow, like this really works. So yeah, it's fun like knowing that you're keeping the power on. So I like to remind people when they go through airports or certain airports that I've done the design work on, like huh, I kept the lights on. So yeah, that's what brings me joy. So now I want to provide some fast facts and some fun facts about women in engineering. I know a lot of times um, when people hear about engineers, they get a certain picture of what an engineer or a scientist looks like. But I'm here to say I am both a scientist and an engineer. But one of the things with women in engineering, whether it's leadership or you're going to school to start your engineering career, one of the things that you may notice is that it's not too many people who look like look like me um, who are who get into engineering or get in there and stick with it so if you look at the fast facts and we're just going to run through this really quick so freshmen intending to major in engineering math statistics computer science any stem field and two and these numbers are from 2017 to 2018 i think they do this every two years so we should be able to see some new numbers um, sometime this year. And this is from um, SWE, Society of Women Engineers um, Research. So in 2007, it was 3.7% of people of women who intended to go freshman to um, um, become a STEM major in college. 2017, that number rose to 9.5%. So over 32% of women switched out of STEM degrees programs in college. And I can tell you personally that when I got to Clemson, I had a lot of friends who looked like me who said they were there for engineering, but ended up changing their major by sophomore year. So over 32% of women switch out of um, STEM degree programs in college. And we'll talk more about why um, once we go through the numbers. So 
So only 30% of women who earn bachelor degrees in engineering are still working in engineering 20 years later. So think about that. Like they get the job, they're there, and then only 30% remain um, working in an actual engineering field. 30% of women who have left the engineering um, profession cite organizational climate as the reason. So we're going to look at the degrees awarded and look at the 19.9% of bachelor degrees awarded to women in engineering and computer science, only 19.9%. Um, and 6.1% of those are women of color. So um, yeah, those are the facts for degrees. So let's talk about the workforce. Only 13% of engineers are women. Let that sink in for a second. 13% are women. Why is that? Again, we'll talk about that. Um, wage gaps. I know wage gaps have been a uh, top as of recent years about women not getting a uh, um, same pay as men in the same profession. So 90 female engineers earn 90 cent for every one dollar male engineers earn. Um, only 26 percent of computer scientists are women. And in your faculty and staff, like when you go to college and there's a faculty or staff member um, teaching you your classes, only 17% in engineering are women. Out of my professors in college, I only had two, specifically for engineering, two who were women. One was my computer science, um, one of my computer science professors, and one was my engineering professor and she was actually my power systems um, engineering professor. Um, the top 10 engineering degrees for females in 2017 through 2018, mechanical being the first, um, as you can see the list here, number seven is electrical and I'm putting a spotlight on that one because that's what I am. Electrical. So those are some fun facts. Again, you can go to Society of Women Engineer for more information on that. And just wanted to point this out because I did find this was updated in 2019, so last year, that 15.7 um, engineers and architects are make up the women in STEM occupations, only 15.7. Um, biological scientists, those are our doctors and anyone in um, typically the medical field, though that range is like 45% and you have like 42% chemist material sciences and computer and math occupations are behind that. I think that's like 26%. So let's talk about some of the challenges. I said we would get to this part. So why do women get engineering degrees or go to college and switch out or um, get engineering degrees, graduate, and then they get into the workforce and decide to leave. So a few of those challenges, and again, this is some of the things that I personally know, um, and also some things that um, you can research and find that there's a lot of data out here um, on different challenges that women face. But some of these um, are some of the personal that I've heard with some friends of mine or something I've experienced. So challenges, lack of role models or mentorship. Um, yeah, so once you get into the field, like for me, for instance, I work in an office and we have a team of like 113 engineers that my direct director um, manages. So me as an engineering manager, I am the only black woman manager as well as the only black woman engineer in the entire building. Um, mm -hmm. And that's not just specific to my team, that's in the building. Specific to my team, I'm still just the only one. And out of that number, only 13, including myself, are women engineers out of a team of 113. Um, so when you come into a place and there's no role, not anyone who looks like you, then you, you kind of feel lost. You don't, you don't know who to turn to for mentorship, a role model to help you navigate, whether that's someone going into college, um, to navigate what classes to take, what you should be doing, um, any extracurriculars you can be doing that will help you in your um, undergrad degree or grad degree, 
um, anyone at work who you can get to mentor you on ways to navigate if you want to continue to leadership or if you want to just continue to build your role as an engineer as a whole. So that's one of the challenges. Gender and racial bias in the workplace, the classroom. Um, being a black woman in engineering, uh, it is, I'm sure, a lot of both gender and racial bias based on um, ability. So women um, tend to face, because when you think of engineering, I know a lot of people probably think it's male dominating, and the numbers will indeed agree with that. But I'm sure there are women who feel like there's a bias based on being a woman and enjoying math and science. If you are able to navigate or get a specific job, um, there are biases out there that could prevent you from either advancing or finishing your degree. Wage gaps, we talked about the 90 cent on a dollar um, versus the dollar that the males get that the 90 cent um, that the women receive on wage gaps. So we may not be getting paid um, the same thing as some of our male counterparts who are doing the same jobs. Um, and wage gaps also sometimes don't necessarily have to do with you being a woman or being a male. Um, some of that is on your resume and what you have done um, versus the person sitting next to you in order to sit in that seat. So, um, but uh, sometimes it can be like, well, she's, you know, she's not getting paid because she's a woman um, as much as the male. So disillusion regarding the level of impact they would have as scientists and engineers. So the challenge with that is thinking, well, you know, I'm, I'm not going to make an impact. Like nobody's going to care whether I sit in the seat or not. I'm not going to make an impact. So I may as well go do something that um, has more visibility than being an engineer or scientist because I'm going to have to work hard and and whatever disillusion you may have with your level of impact. But I'm here to tell you that it doesn't matter if you're the first to do it, do it. Like wherever you in and whatever career you decide to do, you're always gonna make an impact, um, whether it's for somebody in your family, whether it's for your friends, like there's gonna always be someone proud of you because you worked hard to get into that position. So that's one of the, um, one of the other challenges that women face. So how do we close the gap? Um, so these are a few that um, came to mind. Give girls and women the skill and skills and confidence to succeed in math and science. So give encouragement. Make girls and women aware that they are as capable as anyone to succeed in math and science. Um, one of the big things for me growing up was I had a lot of um, teachers who believed that, you know, I could be anything I want to be. And I also had that in my home. Um, my grandfather was a big, um, a, big advocate, a, a big advocate for me growing up because this thing was like, go to college, do something with computers. Um, you know, that's the wave of the future. Just get, get into something to do with science, computers, and whatnot. Now, my goal, as I said before, was initially computer engineering. Found out I hated programming. Didn't do it in college. When I got to Clemson, I was like, "What y'all are doing this for fun? Who does this for fun? So I decided that in order to stick with my whole engineering curriculum, I was going to do um, electrical engineering instead because it was less programming. I still had to program, but it wasn't as much. Um, but we still had the same um, curriculum as far as classes, minus the additional five or six classes that they needed to take in programming. So give girls the confidence to succeed in math. So I had that growing up. Um, we, you know, and let them know that math skills are learned over time and embrace the challenge. And also um, the role models, like, Someone being a role model for you is a huge component, whether it's your teachers, your parents, somebody in your family who's there to give you confidence that you're going to succeed. Um, also, improve STEM education and start support for girls in early education and through K-5. So professional um, education to teachers, I think, has been a big push in these past couple years in order for them to um, 
learn additional skills to help teach STEM, STEM um, activities in the classroom, to incorporate that a little bit more. Um, also, um, encourage them to take math and science classes. Again, embrace the challenge. Um, after school and summer STEM opportunities. This is a really good one. I did not have anything like this when I was a teenager. So encouraging women and girls in your family or that you know to come to activities like this so they can see um, people who are able to give them a different perspective on why math and science is so cool and why they should embrace going into those STEM fields um, is a good one. Work to attract, recruit, re and retain women in STEM majors and fields in college and universities. So again, I talked about me being the only person who looks like me in my office. One of the things at my school is when I went to Clemson, um, the, <laughs> the first time I went, I got a scholarship to go. So I, my mom was a single parent. So I was like, whatever I need to do to go to school for free. So I ended up getting an academic scholarship. I graduated, like I said, number two in my school. So I was able to get an academic scholarship, but I did not step foot on that campus until orientation. I know, weird, strange. But I knew that's where I was going to go because it was free and it was a good, really good engineering school. But one of the things that also attracted me to Clemson's curriculum was the fact that as soon as I stepped on campus my first day, I already had two mentors. One in peer, um, which is um, programs for educational enrichment and retention. And the other one was in WISE, Women in Science and Engineering. So I had already had two um, mentors that were able to guide me through Clemson as a whole, but also my engineering classes. And the last one, hire women and work on retention. It's good when you get your foot in the door, but as you see, 30% of women only stay um, for, like have been there for over 20 years. Um, so the goal is to make sure that when you get into these jobs, to get that mentorship, find something you love about it, but um, that will make you stay. That's the retention part. Like, what are you doing to diversify? Um, that university, that workplace, in order to make women feel comfortable enough to stay and to succeed um, are other ways to close the gap. And I Andrew, know if I could just and talk. Mm -hmm. yep. I'm sorry, if I could just jump in. We have a question here about role models. Mm -hmm. um, the question is, how did you choose and approach educational and or professional role models during your time in school and afterwards? Um. Well, I, I'll start with in school. One of the things that um, I that I chose were number one, someone I was comfortable enough to have the conversation with. Like maybe it was somebody I was around for a while. Um, like maybe one of my professors, like my power systems um, professor, was one that um, helped to guide me through the curriculum and what I should be doing and also offer advice on internships and whatnot that I needed to. Um, and again, your, your mentor or role model doesn't have to be, because I'm talking about women in engineering leadership, it does not have to be a woman. Um, I also had a male mentor, um, one of my professors in college, and he was really good about um, also suggesting internships and classwork and whatnot and writing recommendations for me. So I formed that relationship. So getting close, getting comfortable enough to have that conversation and let them know, hey, I want you to be my mentor. Um, these are some of the things I'm looking into, looking to do with my career. What can you suggest? I think just building that bond and actually having that conversation with them. I, once you're comfortable enough to do that, then I think most people are fine with guiding you through your um, career. And School. Awesome. Excellent answer. Is there another question? Um, not at the moment. Okay. All right. So um, some things to start now for an engineering career. So um, one of the things that I have the opportunity to do as an engineering manager is hire. 
and my I hire engineers right out of college so usually they'll start with me for an internship and I'll try to keep them on if our num if we're um if we're hiring and we have the position available I'll try to bring them on full time um so I get to introduce um, new engineers to their career, um, which is very exciting to me. Uh, but some things to start now for an engineering career. Um, take the right courses, and I had right and capital letters um, for a reason. Take the right courses, meaning calculus, chemistry, computer science, programming, CAD. Like I said, I did not have programming in high school at all, very small high school, limited resources but I did have AP classes where I was taking calculus and all the AP classes required so I can get that credit before I got to college. Um, chemistry is the big one. Any of those science classes related to whatever field you want to go into, make sure you're taking the right classes and um, use your guidance counselor as a guide to ensure that um, the classes that you're taking are going to be helpful to you in whatever college and university or what field you're going to be pursuing after um, high school or after college. Make sure you're getting, in college, you usually have um, your advisor. Everybody, I know at Clemson, everybody was assigned an advisor and we had to meet with them um, before every semester and I think once or twice during the semester to ensure we were on the right track in order to graduate. So I think most universities work like that. So make sure you're taking the right courses for the career you want. STEM camps and after school programs. Like I said, we did not have this when I was um, in school. So this is a really good program. So if you are able to find um, outlets like this, this is great. Um, look for college universities that offer a variety of engineering programs. Um, when I got to school, the first thing we do is um, it's like engineering 101. So you have a little taste of every engineering program um, your freshman year before you actually declare major. Um, so I was able to get exposure to all of them before I made my final decision. And then we went on different walks and visits to the different um, colleges or the different engineering programs to have a talk and listen to the professors talk about what's what. Um, so look for a college and university that offers a variety of programs so in case you don't like one like me i decided computer engineering wasn't for me i moved to the next best thing and probably the best thing for me was electrical engineering um job shadow if possible i know a, a lot of companies um will offer um high school like even elementary to come in and job shadow if possible um, so if you have a parent or a friend of the family or someone whose company offers that, then see, and even if they will do it individually and get permission for you to come and sh job shadow them for one day, if you know somebody who's in the field that you would like to be in, then take that as an opportunity to ask them, hey, like, I want a shadow. Would, would you mind if I come to work with you for half a day or a few hours so I can see what you do to see if that's something that you would want to enjoy? for um, your career. Co-op internships. Like I said, I have the opportunity to hire interns and co-ops. If your university um, or even high school has a program where they offer co-op internships and they have a partnership with the company who does that, look into it. Again, ask your guidance counselors, that's what they're there for, um, or your advisors in school to see what opportunities are there for those internships and co-ops. And most of them pay, um, Really well. I know um, my company, we do pay our interns um, for their hours that they work. Um, establish a mentor and mentee relationship. Again, that goes to what I was saying about being comfortable enough to ask someone if they would be willing to be your mentor. Um, I mean, again, most people in their career um, who's been there for a while, it's fine with sharing some trade secrets of how um, to guide you or answer questions. It doesn't even have to be face-to-face. -face. We have email, we have Zoom, um, text messages, just to establish some type of relationship. Someone who can write recommendations if you decide to go to grad school. Um, so I had to establish a lot of those relationships when I went to get my master's 
in order to make sure that um, I was able to get those um, those recommendations. So those are some things you can start right now. So that is the end of the women in leadership portion. Anyone have any questions? Not seeing any in the Q&A just yet, but we can give them a few minutes to see if they come in. Okay. All right. One is, um, one asks, are you currently mentoring anyone? Um, I don't, I, well, I guess one person, but we talk sporadic. He's an old coworker and we, he usually calls me for advice, um, in his career. Like we talk probably like once a month. Um, but even if it's once a month, like maybe you're going through something, but currently I probably have one. And of course all the kids in my family, um, look to me for guidance my niece she's moving into her junior year in college and she her major is fashion design i have no clue about fashion design but i know about life so she takes it upon herself to ask me some moves or some things that she should make in college um, um just because she knows that i've i've lived it so just about to guess just one person plus the people in my family awesome Okay, that's it. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing any more at the moment. Okay. Maybe then we might finish a little. Yeah. Maybe okay. if they if we have some at the end, if okay. we have a few minutes. Oh, one just came in actually from Tamara. Okay. okay. Knowing that you're the only woman in your classes, major and even at work, how do you continue to progress? Any advice? Um I've always um, looked at it as an opportunity to, since I'm the only person, only woman, or if I show up and it's a lot of days like that, then I feel like if I have a seat at the table, so to say, or if I'm the only person there, then I'm establishing a spot for everyone who comes after me. So even on days when it's hard, when I may not, like I may want to vent at work or things like that then I just look at the bigger picture and know that without me being here, it might be a little harder for somebody else coming behind me. So I just persist and I know what my goals are. Um, eventually, like how I wanna move up in my career path, I look at the bigger picture as no matter where I've sat, I just wanna leave footprints for somebody else. So even when it's hard, even when you feel like giving up, always try to make sure that somebody coming behind me will have it a little bit easier.